were talking to Amelia de Moldenberg and YouTube recommended your video to me from some music videos that I was watching, which is great for which you. Which one? I don't remember what, what my entry point was. It was probably a year ago. Okay. And um, I honestly fell in love with the show, the, your style, um, the way you approached talking to uh, the grime rappers. Mm -hmm. um, struck me the most because it was like two fish out of water situations that felt so comfortable and it really um it, it was amazing that you were able to dr draw out the sweetness in these guys mm -hmm. um uh, which is something that i really liked and then uh, you know i've just been a fan ever since and i shared it with these guys um and they loved it too and uh that's really like the genesis of how this started. And it seems like you're on your way. Like you've got like a million subscribers on YouTube. I do. You're crushing TikTok. But how would you describe like who you are? When I got asked to do this, I was like, oh my goodness me. This is crazy that people in America like are now watching what I do. And that it's like kind of that even that you guys have watched the show. Like to me, that is mad. Um, and so, yeah, that was like, when I first heard about doing this, that was my first initial thing. So thank you for explaining <laughs> how it came to be. But yeah, I'm just over the moon to be here. So thank you very much for asking me. Um, but yeah, your question was how I started what I'm doing. Yeah, I mean, what, how, how did it all start? Well, Chicken Shop Day, the format, started off as a column in a magazine. And this magazine was run out of a youth club. So when I was 16, I joined this youth club near where I'm from in Northwest London. And it was just, everyone there uh, was under 21 and everyone grouped together every Wednesday and made this magazine. So it was like, just, yeah, everyone made a magazine and, and it was all about culture, fashion, music, um, kind of everything to do with culture. But everyone there was really into UK rap and grime. And I was into like, Katy Perry and um, this band called McFly that were big in um, <laughs> in the UK. And so that was kind of my entry point into, um, into the music. And as soon as I started there, I realized I really wanted to write for the magazine. And it made sense that um, the people that I would gonna interview would be rappers because they were this kind of first people that everyone suggested. And I thought it'd be fun, uh, instead of just doing a regular interview, that the interview was a date. I also really wanted to go on a date, which was kind of the main reason. Um, and then someone suggested, oh, well, well, you should go on a date where you, would, you wouldn't usually go on a date or you would never in a million years going on, go on a date. And then that's how the chicken shop happened. I don't know if you have chicken shops in the US, like we do, in the UK, but chicken shops are like on every single high street and kind of every inner city has numerous chicken shops. And it's like a fast food place where sometimes they have tables, but sometimes they don't have even have tables and chairs. And you would just go in and out and get your meal for like very cheap price, but you would never suggest to meet like a potential date there, <laughs> which is um, why I love it so much. <laughs> So yeah, so it started I, as the column. Was it, was and then, it, but listen, I thought I saw Nando's though. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I did Nando's. one, yeah, you're very, you know it well actually, the back catalog. Um, I did one <laughs> with Nando's, that was at Wireless Festival. Um, mm. I think maybe that's the one that you mean. But that was because okay. like Nando's were providing the food for the backstage at Wireless and I set up camp and I just running around backstage grabbing as many artists as I could and be like, hey, do you wanna go on a date with me? And they'd be like, uh, who are you? Cause at that stage, they, people didn't really know who I was. And I was like, uh, please, it will take like two minutes. And like in festivals, like it was my first entry point into going backstage at a festival. And I'll tell you, rappers in particular, they wanna do anything but be interviewed. Like in a festival, they're just like in their trailers the whole time, like, doing whatever and so it's just like was very tricky to kind of coax people out of their trailers and to sit opposite me and eat some chicken and chips but got there in the end but yeah so usually it's in a chicken shop though and i usually go to the one near where the artist is from so near their local area i like they'll choose the shop or they'll tell me kind of an area and i'll go find it but yeah it started as a column and then when i was in my first year at university um, I thought it'd be much better if it was filmed. And so then I s started to film them on YouTube and it's been eight years since I did, uploaded my first one with a rapper called Getz. 
So yeah, but it's been a long process, but I think doing the column first, like writing it out and like going there, having like a, my phone and recording it and then writing it up and someone taking photos, I feel like that kind of built the format and it kind of built the tone of voice. And so it put me in a more confident position when I then went to make the video episodes. But the other thing that was holding me back from making the video episodes was I literally had no idea how to like film anything or like video production. And like, I'm still learning a lot about video production, but I didn't know any camera operators. I didn't have any cameras or anything. And then I was a runner on a music video shoot and I met a camera operator and I just said, oh, I've got this like thing that I do where I like go on dates with rappers in chicken shops and I like write it up. Um, can you please film it? And he was like, oh, okay, sounds insane, but sure. And then, yeah, he brought his friend and we um, did it in a chicken cottage in um, Farringdon in London. So question, you said you was like uh, a Katy Perry fan. And um, so basically you was, you was not, a fan of like this this grime music or hardcore music. So when you pitched this idea or you told your friends what you was about to do, like what was their response like? I feel like they were just curious. And I think a lot of my other friends did listen, like were interested in rap music. And and obviously like the people at first, the people that I were into were interviewing were like friends of friends and so it was more people were excited that I was just going and you know being proactive and just in you know making relationships with people and interviewing people um but yeah I was just very uh, growing up like very into pop music um so any kind of rappers that like transferred into like the mainstream pop like I would be listening to um but but like I didn't grow up listening to UK rap and grime but I got into it I guess I was I was 16 so I was still kind of young when I started doing it um, and then, yeah, and then I've been listening ever since. <laughs> That's so cool, man. It's cool. Were you ever but, yeah. nervous? Like, when you, when, you know, somebody was like, I, I want to meet at this chicken shop in my, um, in my hood. Did you ever like, nah, I ain't, I ain't going there? <laughs> um, I've been to some places. Yeah, I've been to some places. Well, because before I used to, like, up until recently, I used to find the shops myself. So I mm -hmm. would go and spend like hours like going up to chick like going into chicken shops and like trying to persuade the boss man to like let me film and they'd always just be like no way because they just haven't had no idea what i was talking about and they're just all they're concerned <laughs> about is like serving their customers fair yeah. enough completely they don't want just me coming in like i had to sh like do like filming something so um that was one of the hardest parts of like it was persuading the chicken shop owners to let me film mm. there and i remember like having to wait for hours because i stupidly went so in the UK, like a lot of kids after school, that's where they'll go. They'll go to the chicken shop to get some food. After school finishes at like 3.30. And stupidly, I went to try and find a shop at like 3.30. And I had to wait for two hours <laughs> while all of the kids were being served. And I was like so freezing. Um, but then in the end, they did um, let me film there. But at first as well, I, the other stuff about video production I didn't know. I wouldn't even shut the shop. The, f the customers would still be there, like be serving food, and we'd have to like stop the cameras um, <laughs> every time someone came in and like ordered their like chicken nuggets and chips. Um, and I then realised, oh, we should probably like pay to shut the shop. That would be a better idea. Um, so yeah, cool. but it's all been a learning curve, really. Mm. That's cool. Exactly. It is. It's such an interesting uh, approach to having an interview. And I'm pretty sure it works like a charm in terms yeah. of like loosening, you know, your guests up, you know, to be open and to answer questions a bit more relaxed. Definitely. You yeah, know, I because think you're right. Like we hate interviews. Like I, I like sometimes I think about this. I'm like, man, what am I doing? I hate interviews. But <laughs> I think I think for me, I think the gift in it is just meeting complete strangers and just learning their processes for how they like, you know, communicate with others in this lifetime. And it's just mm -hmm. so fascinating to me, you know, um, cause they're answering questions that we have. So it's like a crash course into mm -hmm. all these really interesting, peculiar people. And mm -hmm. you are definitely different. I mean, <laughs> how much it. chicken do you eat? <laughs> how much question. do I eat? How much chicken do you eat? Like, are uh, you, how much chicken are you, do are you I tired eat? of, are oh. you tired of chicken? 
I would never be tired of chicken. Um, chicken nuggets is my order. I don't really like chicken on the bone. Um, I just don't like the texture. I feel like it's, I, I've always just preferred a nugget, but that's the thing that people find odd is that I only eat chicken nuggets because I don't think many, like everyone loves a chicken nugget. But my order is always chicken nuggets and chips. Um, there's and yeah, there's is, one person in the world that might love chicken nuggets a little bit more than you. Who? His name is King Curtis from okay. this TV show called Wife Swap. Right, okay, I'm writing right, that down. Nuggets. Oh no, you have to, I mean this kid, it was the only thing he would eat. He was running his family. He's much older now. Oh, but, he was nuggets. Oh man. <laughs> chicken nuggets are good for me. Wow. Oh, oh, yeah, and no, all it was he would amazing. eat was chicken nuggets. His... Yeah, it sounds like I'd get on with him. Oh man, you, listen. <laughs> It is a very funny... King Curtis, Wife Swap. Just remember I told you, it's fucking hilarious. Hold on, hold on. You talking about the show Wife Swap? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I gotta see that. In this episode, this black woman came over and she was like, you know, you're gonna be... You know, their mom went somewhere else and this yeah. is... They were like, mid, I don't know, Midwest, kind of... You know... Oh, man. I know this is man, he went off. She tried to change his menu. Yeah, he, the new wife. Yes. Oh, and man. he lost it. She's trying to come in here and tell us what we should oh be eating. God. Like we're the sorry this. people. I gotta see this. Chicken nuggets are good for me. <laughs> Hands off my nuggets. Oh man, is it chicken nuggets? Nuggets is is good though. Oh my god, it's all this kid ate. Do you like chicken yeah. nuggets? I uh, yeah. Well, you know what? I I, I ain't. I don't really eat chicken like that. But yes, I do. I, I, I love. Do. I love them. Okay, good. Today. I'm happy about that. But yeah, and, and then also back to your previous point about like not liking interviews or, or a lot. I find that a lot of musicians or artists or just talent in general, like don't, or it's not that they don't like interviews, but maybe they've done so many of them that they're, mm -hmm. you know, tired of them or they find them tedious or generic. And I yeah. think that's yeah. another reason why I wanted to start Chicken Shop Day was because um, I was tired of watching like boring interviews where people would just be asked the same question and um, I wanted to do something a bit different and I think the date aspect of it really like shows a different side to people's personality because a date you know when you're on a date it's an intimate thing and you it's like revealing and I think that some that's kind of a lot of the allure, allure of like why people want to watch the show because um, you know a different side of people's personality comes through um, which I don't think you get in like a regular interview. And it also allows me to like play a kind of persona or a character. Mm -hmm. Well, you're, you're, here's a different usage of the word date. What is your birth date? What is my birthday? Oh, um, the 30th of January, 1994. So I'm an Aquarius. 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 Yeah. Break it down. Can, no, it's all good. Can you tell? No, come on, man. No, I, I, no, no, no. I just was asking. I was I know, just curious. I want to know the, what, what is, what's the Aquarius. What's the Aquarius uh, traits? Oprah. Mm. Um, Justin. Is Oprah an Aquarius? Alicia. Okay. They all like nuggets. Wow. Bob Marley. Bob Marley. Oh, wow. Okay. Very, you I'll know, take, they I'll have take like that. Aquari I think Aquarius have big of views of the world. Mm. Okay. Have you, when you've gone on these dates, have you ever uh, off camera have they ever tried to hit on you and, and uh, go on from there? No, Good which question. is sad, which is very sad. Because um, <laughs> you'd think they would all be obsessed with me. Um, but no, okay, maybe one, um, a rapper called H, we have like a sort of thing going on where... Oh um, yeah, I saw that. I was about to ask you about that. Yeah, we have, there's a lot of chemistry between us. Um, so it's sort of like an ongoing, um, Relate, relationship of sorts. Um, he's, he, I like him a lot, but you know, I can't be tied down to one guy. This is the thing because I love to date, as you know. So I really, I really can't be taken off the market because then the show will end. <laughs> Which is what will happen when I finally get a boyfriend. The show will will end. And then what? What's the going to be the new show? Married at the Chicken Shop? Yeah, it will just be about married life. Me. <laughs> Me and the kids and the dogs know. Um, I don't know, I'll do something else. I've got a cooking show. I can't cook. Um, or maybe I'll do uh, a dance show. I love to dance. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yes, I do. But I'm not, well, people think I'm not very good. But no, not that I'm not very good. I think people <laughs> think that it's strange. <laughs> strange dancing. But I think it's a special, unique. Mm. Well, 
<laughs> People think, think I'm not very good is hilarious. But I think <laughs> dancing is relative, right? Well. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, but question, this for all of y'all. How can you say somebody's a good dancer and somebody's a bad dancer? I mean, I, me, I would say somebody's bad if they're offbeat. But if you yes. really think about it, how the f you gonna say they bad if they dance? You, you wanna hear something funny about that? Of <laughs> Dame Dash, Dame Dash saw me dancing in a nightclub and came mm -hmm. up to me afterwards. I was sauced, I was out. And he came up to me <laughs> afterwards and he goes, listen to me. I go, what? He goes, you're so offbeat that you're kind of <laughs> on beat. It's like yeah. the weirdest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> He's like, no one can consistently be that off beat on every think? moment unless it was. <laughs> Do you think like if you're a musician or if you like work with beats, like, you know, like you guys, do you think that naturally you have better rhythm, it translates into dancing? Or do you think it just... Not, like, not always. No. Nope. Sometimes the most prolific producers ever. Hey, look, uh, but again. Dance like they got two left feet. So that's what I'm saying. Are we judging them off the beat? I think, first of all, the textbook sort of, you know... Definition of dance? A, opinion. I won't say definition, because I'm not an expert, but I will say opinion of what's good is people who generally move to the subdivisions of a beat. Okay. And the more subdivisions you move to, like, the more sophisticated. Yeah. The more stiff, the less beats you <laughs> dance to <laughs> in, the, in, a, in, a, in a thing. It's like, oh, okay, you can move. And then the more subdivisions you can act on, because you might, like, sway back and forth. Yeah. You know, okay, that's yeah, like, like simple. Who can say you, that's not but then you can be like, oh, and then you and you're moving in between all the beats, then people are like, oh, that's a really good dancer. Now that is the textbook opinion. Okay. But then there are some people who just like don't move to a beat at all and they just look good doing it. See? And 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 I guess to your point is that's that's subjective. Yeah. It's, I think, think about this I though. personally think Emmanuel Periton is like one of the best. He has me crying on the floor when he danced. Really? Yes. <laughs> I got to see that. It's one of the funniest things you've ever I always seen wanted in your life. That. If you think about just, then this might sound a little crazy, but hear me out. When you think of the concept of dancing, mm -hmm. that's crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you just sitting there. I feel like human bodies, they're made to move, right? I, I feel okay. like it's natural. To dance, I feel like people have probably been dancing for it since people have been alive. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah. There's something about dancing, I love it, like because it just makes me no, feel no, no. good. I love dancing. I love to see people dance. I love to see people enjoying. But sometimes I be getting in this weird where I be like, when you a dance move is a motion of your body, mm -hmm. right? Ooh, mm -hmm. that was good. So one. you on <laughs> you on the floor with somebody in front of you. Mm -hmm. Just doing these crazy ass motions. Mm -hmm. The song go off, y'all walk off like ain't happen. Y'all was just sitting there doing crazy ass moves for like five <laughs> minutes in front of each other. That's dancing. It's yeah. like yo, let's go dance. You take a girl on the on the floor or a guy, and y'all just do m movements. Movements. And just people spend hours and hours learning. People them spend well. hours doing. <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> Because, listen to me, hear me out. When you break it down, that's stupid. You just got down, you know. Then the song go off. If this ain't your song, you sit down, and y'all wait till another song. Oh, you, oh, shit, that's my shit. You run, jump back out there, and y'all just doing movements. So how can you judge my is good or yours is wrong? I think it's all about it. I think it's subjective. Okay. So you're not a bad dancer. I am a fantastic dancer. No I'm thing. professional level, I would say. Oh, okay. My bad. What's your favorite genre of music to dance to? Ooh, that's a good one. Techno. Um, I don't really, <laughs> I'm not really into techno. I would say like soul music is, is probably, that's what I listen to all the time. Magic Soul is like a mm. radio station in the UK. One of my favorite songs down to George Benson, Give Me the Night. Oh yeah. Oh, give me the night. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you rock it. <laughs> yeah, that she kind of music. <laughs> you can dance. Um, and then, yeah. like, I don't know, what I've been listening to recently, like, I, I guess, like, I, as I said before, I'm a huge fan of pop music, and I think, like, some of the best pop tracks ever, like, are so fun to dance to, whether that's Britney Spears or whatever, or Pharrell. <laughs> 
That's crazy. You just you said George Benson and Britney. That's Give me the night. Give me the night is such a man. Mm. That's such a brilliant. That is like dance record. Wow. Because hold on, listen to the name. Give me the night. Yeah. Something about that song is special. I don't know. Every, every, when I first heard it, I yeah, just thought, it's well, a great song. what is this? <laughs> what kind of was they doing back then? What kind of Cause there's music in the air, lots of love in everywhere. So give me the night. What's that part right there? Zoom, 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 zoom. Yeah. Oh, no. No, no. Give me the I'm taking the night. Give me the night. <laughs> <laughs> give me the night. Cause we gotta really. You know who produced that though? Who? The goat of all goats. Quincy. Yes, sir. Oh man. So come on out tonight, oh, my God. and we can be lovers and the night. Quincy ain't from here. What? He ain't from here. I ain't know he did that. Quincy's the goat. Give me And if you feel all right. Oh, yeah, I heard it now. Look in your eyes. Don't you know we can fly? Come on, man. And then you bam. Come on, all of right now. That's crazy. That's, that's straight cue right there. I forgot about that. <laughs> See, okay, now look, all the stuff I was just saying about dancing, yeah. I can't explain it, but that come on. <laughs> I'm out there. You out there, dan you moving mm -hmm. the whole time. Wow, Quincy, you are the GOAT. We, are, we already know that, but that's nah, he is. He is an alien for that. Dang, I he didn't is. know that. Wow. You, you, listen, listen, Amelia, you just inspired. I think we need to have Quincy on here. We, we do, man. We bug Yeah, for I sure. I mean, 100%, you do. <laughs> I ain't even gonna talk when Quincy up here, man. I gotta just listen. He gonna be so good. You kidding me? Me, pound, get me count, they see, and... Oh, my God. Oh, man, he gonna tell you all that. <laughs> Frank, That's his royalty. stories are amazing. I'm gonna ask. Yeah, we need Quincy. That's royalty, bro. He is, mm -hmm. he is. Amelia, so, thank you for that. That's yes. amazing. You and, said, give, and no I'm gonna worries. tell him you said that. Anytime. That's crazy. We need to show him a video of you saying that. You said, give me the night. That was yeah. like, do you know how many soul records you could have picked? You picked, yeah. give me the night. I'm actually like freaking out. I'm so happy that that went well. Like, if I, I really could have gone very badly. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just saying there's so many good soul songs that you could have yeah. picked from that you would, you know what I mean? Like, really good ones. Yo, and, the and, is and, called, and George me. Benson, give me the night. You know, produced by Quincy Jones is is a really good the one. The title okay. is "Give Me the yeah. Night." Wow! Thank you. You're welcome. That was a joke. Right. The was interview's a over. See you later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Quincy, hey, come so in. Let it's me your ask you a Can I ask you a question? Yeah. How are you feeling? I'm feeling like. Good, but I am gonna. I am like not not nervous, but again, like I said, it's just so amazing to be. I'm in LA right now, and I don't know. It's it's just amazing to be here and to get to chat to you because, um, and for you guys to be asking me questions about what I do because I feel like I've this has been a long journey for me with with um, the shows that I do and Chicken Shop Date in particular, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I feel very lucky to be here. <laughs> All right, that's good. How long are you in the States? Or are you planning to be here? I'm here for a week, and then I'm okay. going to St. Lucia uh, to extend oh, wow. my holiday, yeah. Oh, are oh, you going to turn up? What was the reason you came to the US? Um, to watch the Super Bowl, <laughs> which is my first time I've ever actually watched American football, so, like, what a game to watch. And I, I feel like I, I got a bit better at knowing the rules, but... It just there's a lot going on. There's a lot of running. There's kicking. There's there's you know falling over. There's you know there's everything. Starting stopping. Yeah, honestly, it was like f 15 minutes a quarter, and then after about 10 minutes, I was like, why is it only one minute gone by? Um, <laughs> very long <laughs> minutes. Six hours. Are you planning to do any um, interviews here? I would love to. Um, not this week, but I would love to like set up some that I could do in the future. Um, I would love to interview more American artists or like international artists because yeah. uh, I interviewed Jack Harlow last year and I think yeah, that that's good. one of my favorite episodes I've ever done. Um, yeah, I saw that. He's amazing. And then that was from in the UK, that, right? I just had, 
Yes. So it was in the UK. I've actually all the all the only episodes have all been filmed in the UK. I've never filmed one abroad. Um, but that's a real ambition of mine is to come to the States and do a series or um yeah, because often when American artists come over, they don't have that uh, much time or often they're all just in their hotel rooms and they can't come to a chicken shop, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, I'd love to come and do a series out uh, in America. You should but... do it. What do you, what do you think a, the uh, American version of a chicken shop would be? Well, yeah, like, I wanted to do um, dollar slice dates, like dollar slices in New York, would that work? Oh, mm. Yeah. I'm thinking of mm -hmm. like a place where you wouldn't go on it. You like wouldn't choose to go on a date because it's like not the right now. vibe. <laughs> it stays a little different. It's a little different. <laughs> yeah, do a little research before you let these people bring you to the hood. It's a little different. Yeah, so I thought maybe dollar slice could work. Dollar slice will work, but just make sure you're having the slice in the right place. In the right place. Okay, cool. <laughs> yes. You'll be fine, but just, you know, just like this. This really ain't a really a pop-up situation where you can just like, no, oh, somebody tell you to come to Compton. Make sure you were the right people. Okay, I'll make sure. Well, cool. You could come with me. You could be my chaperone. Oh no, I'm I'm not going to Compton. Okay. You're okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm not right. Okay, I'll just get someone else. You can come to my hood. I can, you know, you can come to where I am. You'll be fine. But I'm just saying, like, have someone who knows where they are. How about that? Okay. Ma okay, absolutely. Maybe I'm I should sure just have one. Maybe I should have one shop, and everyone comes to me. Perhaps, but it's cool to go to like because your concept is like to go places, and that's cool. I'm just saying, yeah, that's like, true. you you don't want to like, as we say, like get ran on the snag. So like, I do not want to get like, run on the snag. Yeah, you don't want to get ran. <laughs> no on way, Jose. No running Check on the snag, please. Who, who's you know, your ideal? Like, who who would be the uh, ideal uh, guest to get that you don't, that you haven't gotten yet? Well, yeah, I have this course. ongoing thing with um, I don't know if you've heard of him, Drake, <laughs> this um, small artist called Drake, <laughs> and he um, messaged me on my birthday. Um, this is so r really random. Me at my birthday party, he like slid mm. into my DMs and said, <laughs> "Chicken shop day in Harrods." Um, which is like this big store in the UK. And I just freaked out. And I was just like, oh my God, my goodness. champagne puppies messaged me. Um, it was just <laughs> crazy. <laughs> I was like, I can't believe he's even seen the show. So I replied saying, um, let me check my schedule, um, <laughs> which he liked. And then um, we, had, we were arranging it and he was gonna come to London um, and we were gonna film the episode. And then it, it, COVID happened and he didn't end up coming. And then, yeah, various back and forths, but Drake, 100%, is someone I'd love to get on the show, but it's just That'd been... be dope. Yeah. That'd be dope. I was just surprised he'd even watched it. I was just happy that he'd, he'd even watched it. I ended up meeting him at Wireless Festival um, in the UK in summer, and that was amazing. It was a real big moment for me. Um, just, yeah, when people that I'd, like, I listen to their music or, like, big, big artists like that have, like, watch the show or and then ask to be on it, for me, that's just crazy. That's um, crazy. That's good. But, yeah, who else? Pharrell, if you're interested, we could... Chicken and chips? Chicken shot, guys. <laughs> OK. I'm shooting my shot. OK. Chicken shot. OK. okay. I'll okay. take it as a yes. I'm <laughs> shooting my <laughs> shot. <laughs> you, okay. you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. True. What would no you shame. ask Pharrell on a date? What do you mean? What kind of questions? What kind of questions? Oh, well, that would like give the game away. Ah. Uh. I mean, if your music was a piece of chicken, what would it be? That's one of my favorite ones to ask. That's a good question. Breast. The breast? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Chicken breast. No, chicken breast. Quite dry That's my sometimes, though. Five. No, no, no. Depend on who's cooking it. Okay, sure. Yeah. That's my Depending favorite on piece. Who's cooking it. Mm. Oh, always. I want to, I, I've always wanted to ask you about Alicia Dixon in your music video because she is a huge star in the UK and oh, in your, when she's yeah. dancing in your music video, I feel yeah. like I love that moment that that happened. Yeah, she was great. She was. I, mm -hmm. what, I love that video so much. What video is that? She, she wants to move. She wants to move. Oh, okay. 
Yeah. And she did want to move, and she did move very well. <laughs> yeah, she did. But there are so many other artists that I would love to get on. I'd love to get Tyler the Creator. I'd love to get Doja Cat. Um, mm -hmm. Just people that like have a sense of humor. <laughs> I think that's kind of like what I go for. Well, that's my type. <laughs> um, that, I would say people of, also that capture the attention of like young people at, at of at a certain time, like right now. Um, yeah, and then. After the Jack Harlow episode, I'm thinking I need to get more like heartthrobs. I mean, I like people that like everyone fancies um, because that is what I think Jack Harlow has about him. And I think that's what made it such a good episode was that because actually most of my dates that I film, like the whole vibe is like awkward. It thrives off awkwardness and I'm purposefully awkward. And often the dates don't actually don't go that well. Like, you know, the last date I went on with a rapper called Band OK, he actually brought his girlfriend like to the date. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, this is not very successful. And as I said, no one's messaged me after and I haven't had a second date. So when, whenever there's like some form of like chemistry or spark between us, I think people really like that because at the end of the day, people do, people do like to watch people connect like, or like have, you know, have something there as well as people love watching the awkwardness and the strangeness of of what I do most of the time. Yeah. I, lo I loved uh, the stage. setup of when you guys talked about ghosts and how you like brought him full circle to bring it back. I mean, that, I thought that was genius. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, I am a genius. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, he was just so inten unintentionally funny. Like, uh, and I love that when a guest surprises you um, and you have like, I don't know, preconceived ideas of who someone's gonna be. And, and, and then I also think with my questioning, like, I always try and ask questions that I think will kind of take someone off guard or will bring a different side of someone's personality. So that was why I was asking him if he believes in ghosts and, you know, what his favorite color of the rainbow was and, and things like yeah. that. Um, but did you have the, the intention of if he said that he didn't believe how to take him full circle like that? Oh, no, that was just me improvising, which is kind of like half, most of it is improvised. And then obviously I write my questions beforehand. Um, but I never know what they're going to say. And then I kind of think of something else based on what they've said, um, which is what I love about filming. And I, I, I'm involved in every single aspect of the show. So from the production to uh, I don't edit it, but I sit in on the edit and then I pl put a whole release plan together. So I'm involved in every aspect and I always, always have been. But I go back and forth between what my favourite part of actually the process is. And sometimes I think, oh, it's actually filming them and being you know, there and performing. And sometimes it's in the edit because I think with my character, a lot of it is actually made in the edit. Um, the way that we edit it so quick and sort of the jump cuts and cutting from us chatting to then, you know, boss man behind the counter, just like staring down the barrel of the lens or to like some chicken nuggets being made. Um, I think that's kind of what brings the tone of voice together is the edit. So yeah, I like, yeah, I like both aspects but I like it all really and I don't think it would be the show that it, that it is if I was if I didn't have creative control um, which is what's so great about YouTube and um, like platforms like that where you have ownership of of what you put out there which I think more and more now young people especially that's the kind of content that's what they want to watch they want to watch things that are made by the people that are in them rather than someone just being handed a script because it's just more authentic um, but yeah, and I wanted it to. I wanted it to be on TV. I grew up watching TV, and all my favorite things that have inspired me are television shows. And I was really into this show called Pop World growing up, which was on Channel Four, where um, musicians were interviewed. I don't know, maybe for all you were interviewed on it once back in the day, but um, mm. they used to do like irreverent interviews, and they'd always get people doing really random, fun stuff. And that was a big inspiration for me. And I think that when I tried to pitch it to channels and no one wanted it. And so that was kind of the reason why I ended up just making it myself. And actually it's the best decision I ever made because if I had other people and other, another person directing it, et cetera, they would have changed the identity of the show. And um, so, yeah. Have, have the, those networks like circled back to try and take it to the show or they just bring well, it? Because I've seen you do other stuff for TV. Yeah, kind of. I haven't really done too much for TV. A lot of the TV channels now want me to like do stuff online for them because they know that I have a big audience online. Um, but 
Uh, I think that Chicken Shop Date really wouldn't work as a TV format because it's just so bite-sized. It's like five, minute, five minutes long. I can't TV. really see it working on terrestrial television. I think it would have to be built out, and I don't even know if I want to do that. I'm re at first, I was always wanting it to be something else, but actually now I'm quite happy and content with it being online, and that's what it is, because my audience are there, like, you saw it because it was on YouTube, you know, like, I think that it just brings it to a bigger audience and makes it, it has the power to be international, which, you know, I've still got a long way to go to, to grow my channel, but, um, but yeah. I know You're that you a... write, are you interested in doing scripted stuff for yourself? Yeah, definitely. I would love to, like, I am writing at the moment, but it's such a process. I'm like learning how to write. So I'm le I've been doing some screenwriting courses and um, storytelling courses. And I, I lo I've been finding it so fascinating learning how to tell a story. And I think that, you know, storytelling exists in what I do already with Chicken Shop Day, but it's just completely different. Like I build the story, as I said, from deciding what questions I want to ask to then molding it in the edit, um, making sure it has like a beginning, middle and end. Um, in, in that way, but when you're doing script, like when I'm writing narrative stuff, it's, it's, I've got a lot to learn, whether that's like how you create a, an interesting character to um, how you write dialogue, there's just so much. Hey, listen, you are uh, not only a talent, but you are a business. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. You're like, your mind is like a, a mobile office. <laughs> totally. I feel like I've always been that way of always <clears throat> thinking about different things or, or, or trying to move faster than I'm going at all times. Um, but again, I think that comes back to me being in creative control of, of the formats that I do. I think that me, I've always wanted to be someone that, I've always wanted to know how everything works, like from the production to, you know, even when I'm meeting people, I'm always asking, oh, so how did you start that? Or how did this happen? Or, you know, asking other, everyone's jobs within a, within a team, because um, I feel like having that intel will make me better at what I do, um, knowing as much as I can about everything. <laughs> Oh, so what's next for you? What, what you got coming up? Well, as I said, I would love to write scripted thing, something scripted, a TV series. Um, but that's like an ongoing process. And then I really, as I said before as well, would love to just make Chicken Shop Day even more global and international and get on mm -hmm. bigger guests and grow it through broadening out the genres. Like, obviously, Chicken Shop Day started into, by interviewing grime, grime MCs UK rappers, um, and that's kind of broadened out since then to now, you know, I've had Daniel Kaluuya on the show. Um, I just interviewed Charlie XCX. Um, I've like, I, I want to broaden out the genres because I think that's how I'll broaden out the appeal. And also I'm interested in all different kinds of music. And I also think the people watching my show are too. So um, I'd like to carry on growing the show in that way. Um, and then, yeah, I think more projects. I'm always thinking of ideas, but um, I think I've always been so obsessed with pop culture. And I think, you know, I've been lucky enough to like create my own kind of thing within pop culture now. And I think I just want to grow, um, grow it and continue to like cement myself within that world because it's just always been a dream of mine to, yeah, to do what I'm doing now, so. You know, I, I will just throw this out here and you can totally on it. But like if you ever wanted to like grow the show um, beyond its current format, you could include some performances. And I don't, there, so many networks would like fire up for that. I mean, I know you want to do it online and you should. Because you could keep the interviews as short as they are. And because they're like five minutes, which I think is really smart. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, you back it with like, a performance and you do like maybe two or three of these per like episode. Yeah, per half hour. Yeah, because I'm really, in I've always been really inspired by like American late night shows. And obviously they're still so popular and I kind of consume all that from YouTube now. But, um, but yeah, I think in a way those now like have these segments of, in of, of celebrities being interviewed in a fun way, whatever that be, them having to like eat something ridiculous or having to guess something stupid. Um, and then there's obviously performances that go in between it and that's a really good idea. So maybe I'll steal that one. Yeah.
No, that's that's not that's not stealing. That's I'm giving. I'm, I think you should do that. I, I I wouldn't have that idea if it weren't for what it is you're doing. Mm -hmm. And in terms of other people, yeah, I have a team and I'm building my team out and that's something is back to the business thing. Like that's something I'm learning and I don't know whether anyone, I keep thinking, oh my God, I, I just don't know how to build my team out and is it meant to be this hard and am I meant to feel like there's not enough people in the team and all this stuff. But I feel like maybe that's just how it is always. <laughs> but I think maybe also I'm in like a, it's like a teething stage of me expanding what I'm doing um, because, um, you know, it's, the show's becoming more popular, but yeah, I have a team that works with me and they're brilliant. And, um, you know, the show wouldn't happen without me having the support of, of people now going to find the shops, booking the crew, um, so that I can concentrate on my questions and performing. Because yeah, it's a lot to be doing it all. Um, but I do love it, but yeah. You got a, um, a cooking show also, right? Yeah, I have a cooking show. It's called Amelia's Cooking Show, genius yeah. name. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and yeah, I can't cook, so that's kind of the twist. It's I think a lot of the stuff that I do is like spinning, spinning things um, on their head, so like the inverse of something. So for example, a chicken shop date is like a date that's gone wrong, or a date's not meant to be awkward, and that's kind of what I've done. And then with the cooking show, usually the host of a cooking show can cook to some level. So um, <laughs> and uh, so that's why I've. Ch ch turned it on its head. So yeah, I'm, I'm very interested in, in spoofing things because again, I, I don't think any, uh, I would say, I don't think there's such a, such a thing as really a, an, an original idea. Um, I think that people take things and they turn them into their own thing. And I think that's kind of what I have done is, you know, dating shows are now so popular or, you know, cooking shows are ridiculously popular and um, I've just made it my own with my my unique tone of voice so what's your favorite thing to cook everybody can cook at least one thing you say you can't cook but everybody have their favorite thing to cook what's i yours? can put chicken nuggets in the oven um 100 <laughs> i can put toast in a toaster i can do that i also can make like pasta pomodoro i think you call it marinara sauce here where i just put loads of cherry tomatoes in a tray with garlic and salt and you just put it in the oven for two hours and then when it comes out it's just delicious and you just squidge it all together and put it on pasta. You should definitely have your own chicken recipe by now though. Yeah, the thing is, I can't, I feel like chicken is very difficult to cook. Like I've never like roast a chicken, for example. No, 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 I got you. I, I, I can show you how to, just fried chicken. Or oh, you should have your own line of nuggets. Yes, my own nuggets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think we need to get her a McDonald's commercial and she should do nuggets out here in America. Amelia Nuggets. Yeah. There you go. The date nuggets. Oh, yeah. Date night nuggets. Date night nuggets. We miss Valentine's Day. That's the name year. of your brand. Date night nuggets. See? Date night nuggets. Coming That's to a shop it. near you. Wait. You should do it. I'm Take, trying to tell you. Date night nuggets. And date the ones that you nugget. like, I'm going to tell you all you do, the ones, nuggets that you like, whatever chicken shop in, in, in London that you like, just put a little more of the shit that you like on it, and then it's yours. Like, <laughs> like. <laughs> if this, if they got salt and they got you know a little pepper, it's even, just put a little extra salt on your shit. <laughs> nah, these are my nuggets. Nah, <laughs> that don't work. But you should, you should do like different flavors of of like nuggets that you like and like amazing sauces. It's the date, sauces. Date night nuggets date sold night nuggets. in England. I'm telling you that you ate, that's 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 amazing. That's how lovely. That's big. So that's my big. my salt, my extra salt just ain't gonna work. My extra little whatever, that's not gonna work. No, not extra salt. All right, all right. That day is trouble. I need to go and like explore the chicken options in LA. What would you say is the best? There are some like chicken shop ish type of places that I'm sure someone in LA can point you to that are amazing. Scott, Scott, no? Yeah, I'm trying to think what would be a good nugget out here. Um, is is nugget is chicken fingers not the same? Yeah, I can I can go with chicken strips or chicken strips, chicken yeah. fingers. Yeah, for sure. I'll stretch to that. It's definitely chicken in LA. We'll take you to Roscoe's. Yes, I've I heard of this, Roscoe's. Take it to Roscoe's. You gotta go to Roscoe's. Mm -hmm. I've heard of this Roscoe. <laughs> I have. Go to Roscoe's. Famous Roscoe. Who, who is your favorite celebrity couple? My favorite celebrity couple? 
Ooh, that's a good one. I really love David and Victoria Beckham. Um, I don't know. I just, I just love them because I feel like I grew up around them and like their romance. And uh, I, I think it's cute that they're still together. And I, I do love those. Um, there's so many celebrity couples now. Who is it like um, Machine Gun Kelly and um, Megan Fox? I don't know if I like. I, I, I think that everyone does like a celebrity couple. I think that there's something about them. They just grab so much attention from people. I think people just like seeing, you know, romance live in action, especially when it's two, two people, if you're a fan of both of them, and then they come together, it's like kind of epic. Um, and people like following the story of, you know, the ups and downs of, of their lives, because I think they can probably like relate in some way or the opposite, they're so unrelatable that you're like, that's really engaging. We have UK, you're potentially coming to the States. Any other countries or places you're going to bring the, um, the show to? Well, that's a good question because, like, specifically, like, rap music, you know, is big all over the world. And I met a French man <laughs> recently um, at... Because I also interview footballers and I just... Uh, in, into, uh, like, soccer players, sorry. Um, uh, and I interviewed a French player called N'Golo Kante, who plays for Chelsea. And when I was on that shoot, um, I met some of his teams who they were that were French. And apparently, um, I'm I'm known in in Paris um, <laughs> by some of the rappers there. So maybe I'll have to go to Paris because I know the French rap scene is really big. And also in Europe in general, there's a big rap scene because you know it expands obviously way past the states and and it's kind of glo it's so global now. It's global, yeah. Wow, mm. you got a lot of work. Yeah, and also I I I. I haven't interviewed a Latin artist. Yeah, I don't oh, think. Okay. And so that's mm -hmm. a whole other um, yeah. kind Dynamic. of space and yeah. world mm -hmm. and genre and yeah. type of person to interview. I think you should interview Jay Balvin. Yeah, I would love that. And I love that. Rosalia. I'm a huge fan of her. Oh, yeah. Um, mm. And there's so many people that I would love to interview in that space. But um, yeah, that's what I love about the show because really it just it can just, just go on forever. And it's like, maybe yeah. do I want to be dating forever? Probably not. But like, it could just go on and on because there's just always other people like that I'd love to speak to and love to, to date. So yeah, it's, it's You can kind double of, date. Well, yeah, I have double dated before. Some, uh, a rap crew called Six Seven, there was like loads, there was, well, three of, there's loads of them, but there was three of them that turned <laughs> up. Um, and uh, yeah, we did speed dating. Oh, that's gangsta. Yeah. You should definitely hit key spots like LA, New York, and Miami, and you'll get a ton of great, uh, great ones. One of the hardest parts is securing the dates. And that's what I found the, always the hardest forever is because it's just a process of, you know, I've got a hit list of people that I would love to, to date, but then it kind of, you know, I, I've always had such huge ambitions for, for it. I get the the um, artists on the show through like all different ways. Like a lot of sliding into people's DMs. I've tur I turn up to people's gigs and shows and try and speak to them um, mm. through labels, through publicists, through managers, like going to parties, just trying to like, a lot of people that I've had on the show, it's taken years of persuading. <laughs> I know, crazy to think, but um, it has. <laughs> and so it's all, yeah, a process. Of well, hopefully you get a lot more dates after this. I'm sure you will. Yes, I hope so. Fingers crossed. The and stars are aligned. I'll help you get some people. Yes, that would be great. I'll get you some dates. Yeah, for sure. How often do you come to the States? I haven't been in years because of the pandemic, but I'd love yeah. to come more often. And also, yeah, and, and I will also interview um, s s footballers on Chicken Shop Date as well. And so mm -hmm. I think there's so much room as well, you know, to interview NFL players, to interview NBA players, like, yeah. and I've been in interviewing comedians, actors, like, I, I, there's so many people I would love to interview that are beyond music. Um, I really kind of, the, the next interview, I don't know if you know him, but he, he's really famous in um, the UK, but he's called Louis Theroux, and he's a documentary maker. Um, and he, do, he makes documentaries kind of mainly actually in the, in the US. Um, and he's the next episode of Chicken Shop Day. So it's completely different. 
he's one of my idols, actually, so it's crazy to the first time I met him that he was being on the show. I feel like that's happening quite a lot now. It's like I'm meeting, I'm interviewing people that I'm just, you know, grew up idolizing, and it's just kind of mad. <laughs> that's cool. Congrats. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah, no, all, all of this is amazing. Um, and I hope it's because people like th think that it's different. I think that's kind of what it is. I, I think that, as you said before, like it, it stands out in its own way, or it, it kind of is does something different. And I think that's kind of the best thing about all different kinds of fields and people in all different walks of life and whatever job they do. Like if you're doing something that kind of stands out from the crowd, um, and if even if it's not successful, like I. I I, the show wasn't popular, but I always at the beginning. But I always knew that it was different and that it had an edge to it, and it it wasn't generic, and it you know it stood out from other other things at the time. And so I just persevered and just kept sticking with it because I I believed in in it, um, and I think yeah, that's kind of worked for me. Do you feel like you've become known as a dating person amongst your friends? Like, do any of them ask you for advice? No. <laughs> Nobody asked me for advice at all. <laughs> Which actually now you're saying it, and I'm saying that out loud, it's, uh, it's, it's disappointing because out of anyone, I've probably been on the most dates of all of my friends. <laughs> okay, um, listen, we asked him for advice. Give us some advice. Give you some advice. Yes, give me some advice. First okay, date. always remember the date's name. Okay. Because numerous times <laughs> I've been on the dates and they don't know my name. Uh, and I asked them mid midway through the interview and they, they don't know. So okay. um, I would say always remember the name. Um, I do remember a guy you asked to freestyle and he said, what's your name again? <laughs> yeah, I was like, Free do a freestyle yeah. with my name. And he goes, what's your name again? <laughs> um, people, you know, people also still don't know my name, like fans, they all just call me Chicken Girl. Or I, when I'm in London, I'll get, I get recognized a lot now and people will just be like, chicken. And I'll just turn around. <laughs> and now I just always turn around when someone says chicken um, because I think they're yeah. talking to me. But yeah, and um, yeah, that's kind of my my main tip. And I I would also say, um, lean into your awkwardness. I think often dates, you know, you can be nervous or you, you, they they don't go to plan. But that's fine because um, mm -hmm. it's okay to be awkward. Okay, number one, turn off on a date. Number oh, um, probably if they're a vegan. <laughs> really. <laughs> Fake nuggets? No, so no nuggets. nuggets. <laughs> What's another turn off? Ooh. That's not yeah, I mean, I'm attracted to, to talent. You know, people oh, okay. that are good at what they do, um, creative minds. So if you don't have that, then that's a big turn off. What was the best first date that you went on where the person brought you? You don't have to say who it was, but where they brought you or what you guys did that is your favorite first date. Do you mean from f with chicken shop? No, like in uh, you, you as in, in your real life or? Oh, the only dates I go on are, are in chicken shops. <laughs> like seriously, no one asked me out apart. Well, actually no one asked me out because I always am the one who asks people out. I'm very pro like the woman asking the guy out or whatever it is, whatever you're in, like, or the girl and the girl or the guy and the guy. Like I'm very much into the woman asking out. What's up with the guy age though? How y'all link up? Yes, H. Um, I know. He's sort of like the one that got away. Maybe I'm the one that got away for him, really. Mm -hmm. But we're still, we still keep in touch. We're still, we're still very close. Maybe okay. it will work out for us in the future. He doesn't no. like that I go on dates with other rappers, though, which he needs to I get over that. because I'm not going to stop. Have you guys made out yet? No. Oh, it's getting steamy. Yeah, but <laughs> you know, it's going to happen. I know. It's, it's imminent. Hold on, hold on. Y'all ain't made out yet. Do he know he dating you? <laughs> well, this is the thing. It's kind of like, it, we're kind of like in an open relationship, I would say. Okay. As in, right. he doesn't know that we're dating. Oh, okay, 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 okay. But I do. No, uh, it's more It's matters. more just like a vibe. Know. It's like one of those things where it's, it's like, it's not, nothing's happened, but it's like an energy. Yeah. I actually, I wanted to introduce uh, H and uh, P to work together. You should 100% do that. Oh, that'll be dope. I actually spoke about you guys yesterday, Tim. Um, oh, yeah? He was very excited about the whole concept of me meeting you guys, and he's a big fan. 
That's that's fresh. So who, who are some of the top terms, uh, artists then? in the UK right now? In terms of like in the rap scene, mm -hmm. or or pop or whatever. Um, do you know someone called Central C? Yep. Rapper. He's very popular in the UK right now. Um, Dua Lipa, I would say, in terms of a British person that's kind of like transcended into the States, like she's mm -hmm. huge. I would love to get her on the show. Um, who else? A uh, rapper called Dave. He's very popular. Um, I've interviewed him um, on Chicken Shop Day and he actually doesn't do interviews. And artists that don't do interviews, like refuse to do interviews for whatever reason, are my absolute favorite people to get on the show because then you've got the scoop. Um, and a lot of rappers don't do interviews. Like, I don't know what it is. They just, with rappers, they, a lot of them just don't want to do them. And so whenever I get um, an artist who has that reputation, it's always amazing. So yeah, Dave and mine, Chicken Shop Date, is one of his only like filmed interviews. So I'm really happy about that. And it's one of my favorite ones as well. But he wouldn't yeah. come to a chicken shop because he's got a phobia of them. <laughs> um, so we did it in like a posher chicken restaurant. <laughs> But yeah, Dave's okay. huge. Um, there's a new artist called Pink Panthress. She's mm -hmm. big right now um, in terms of like what young people are listening to. But yeah. Um, I love them, their music, man. I love Sam them, Fender, he plays like guitar music. I don't know what you call it, guitar music. Like rock, mm, rock music? I guess he's in like the rock category, alternative rock. Um, I'd love to get him on the show. He's from Newcastle, he's great. Yeah, um, you got a lot going on. You got a lot going on. Yeah, this is amazing. I, I uh, it was really <laughs> great talking to you. Well, oh, thank you so much. I mean, this has been incredible. Um, yeah, I've thank you. Loved every minute of it, and I still can't believe you've asked to speak with me. Um, but there you go. <laughs> well, well, it just goes to show that, like, your ahead. point of view and your take on like having, you know, doing interviews and connecting with people. It's. Uh, it's it's doing exactly that. It's connecting with people, mm -hmm. and it's outside of your country, and it's around the world, and it's just growing. Congratulations! I'd, I'd love to see what you do in terms of your show, and if you choose to expand it or whatever. I'd love to. We'll be watching. Mm -hmm. But yeah, oh, man, it's you. amazing. Congratulations. Oh, I appreciate it. That's that's very nice of you to say. And what the offer still Day stands, bro. For date you to night come nuggets. And have chicken nuggets and chips. All the date night date nuggets. Date night, date night nuggets. D N N. Date night nuggets. Next. Yeah. Yes. Can you sing? You actually have a really good tone. Um, I can't sing. Actually, I was in the choir at school, and then um, they kicked me off, which is kind of crazy. Because what does that mean? Does it mean that my voice got worse? I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> no, I can't really sing. <laughs> Hold on. They kicked you off in school. They kicked me off the choir. Yeah. So oh, they must terrible. have just you know, liked my voice one day and then not the next. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yes, it is. Yes, likewise. Great. Thank you again, though. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. And yeah, I hope yeah. to come back to the States and travel around. Oh, and if you come to London, message Oh, yeah, me. we come to London. I'm coming to the chicken, chicken spot. Absolutely. You should have date night nuggets it's by It's on then. me. <laughs> I'll pay. OK. <laughs> chicken he nuggets said, are good okay. for me. I can eat 100 nuggets now. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much.